Hi. Good morning. Good morning, sunshine. How are you doing, love? I'm good. How are you? I'm so good. How are you still sleeping? <laughs> I know. So is Nyla. I'm hoping she stays asleep. We'll see. We'll see how long we can get. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. You covered your hair up. <laughs> oh, that's the hard thing about don't you? Because you have fine short hair. Don't you get fed head? <laughs> Oh, I get it bad. Yeah, I still kind of have it. I just like, I just push it down. <laughs> it looks like like I take my hand and just like spin around in circles like throughout yeah. the night. Mine gets really bad in the back. It looks like a like a literal bird's nest. Like it's like all open at the top and then all over the side. It gets real crazy. That's okay. It's though. so bad. I was like, and then I showered last night too, and so then like it's like it feels like it just grew. Yes. Yeah, like a. How's everything going? Yeah. What uh, what kind of coffee are you drinking? Um, just regular coffee with um, like Folgers with oh. almond milk, unsweetened, oh, really? like plain almond milk. Yeah, I can't do the plain and not in coffee yet. I'm not that strong. I the still plain need... almond milk. Yeah, I need flavor. Oh yeah, I, I know it's so bad. It's just like I might as well just like pour the sugar in there, you know. <laughs> no, no, but I, I don't know. I just like, I want to eat something more than drink, <laughs> drink it. So I think I just like ease my way, like out of the sweetener. And then I went to vanilla unsweetened almond milk and then like go like, you know what I mean? So yeah. step by step by step. Yeah. Steven drinks it black. He's such a man. He's such a man. Well, but then since quarantine, he started putting a splash of almond milk in and he's like, Ollie, this is really good. Oh my gosh. That for you, right? But I think like, and then like eventually like he's like, he is like, like last week he's like, oh, uh, I'm not going to drink all my milk in my coffee anymore. Never mind. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Just all of a sudden he's not going to do it. it hurt, yeah. It's like. <laughs> so is he like a, is he very like health conscious? Mm, no, he's like us. Like we're like, like he eats a lot of good healthy foods like but like we grew up in the northeast so we love like well especially him from philadelphia he loves like the pizza and like the uh, you know, oh, so he grew up in philly oh yeah he was born in philly okay okay that's like i mean i was born and raised in delaware so i mean he's basically like a neighbor yeah yeah, yeah. exactly so and we love where like where you, where'd you grow up at bloomsburg pennsylvania it's pennsylvania. like yeah, do you know where Bloomsburg is? I have no idea where Bloomsburg is. It is um like off eighty, like northeast Pennsylvania. Um What's like up the closest major city to it. Wilkesbury is like forty five minutes away from us. Oh, okay, I'm familiar with Wilkesbury. I have a lot of friends in Wilkesbury. But, but we're like north of Wilkesbury. So you would just keep going through Wilkesbury and then okay. Wait, yeah. Yeah. Have you been to like Sullivan County? Like, no. where, like, World's End State Park is. For some reason, I thought you said you camped up there. No, you know what? I feel like, because we did a lot. We've been, um, we go, like, tubing and stuff with a lot of our friends up that way. So I want to say, and we've been to a few different state parks up that way. So but yeah. I can't, I'm not retaining the names of them, but. Yeah. It's so it's up in, like, it's a cute small town. It's like, it's, it's like, coin the only town in Pennsylvania. Oh. And there's, like, a college there. <laughs> oh, okay. What college is there? Is it just, like, a state college? Bloomsburg University. That's where Steve and I met. Oh. Tell me. Actually, I was going to cheese ball. I didn't even, oh my <laughs> I didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, when, how did you guys meet? What year of college were you in? Oh, so we met our, um, so we both went to college for five years. <laughs> okay. Me <laughs> too. Yeah, and, um our first senior year so we were together two years before we got married yeah yeah and okay. I played on a soccer team and he played on a lacrosse team and like we would have mixers and stuff yeah. and we like had a um like a laundry like you know like where like a lingerie or pajama Christmas pajama party mixer okay yeah and I wore Christmas pajamas, like not lingerie Christmas. Like I thought we were supposed to wear Christmas pajamas. So I wore like Christmas long johns. And all these girls are probably there in like lingerie, right? Yeah, yeah. Everything was great. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, guys, it's cool. Yes. That's hilarious. You're like, I'm definitely from Bloomberg, guys. 
yeah yeah and so I mean they were cute though but yeah. yeah it was fun it was fun and he had like the Christmas story boxer shorts on oh well duh it yeah so super. yeah and so we started first night you guys have been together ever since then yeah 12 years wow That's yeah crazy. we got married right so then we met then and then we were married um two years after that like right out of like he graduated I graduated in December he graduated in May and we were married May 30th wow yeah and then we moved to Texas and oh well I guess when you know you know right I didn't realize that yeah yeah and so and yeah we were yep and we just kind of like so we were only 24 23 and 24 and when we moved, when we got married and moved it away together and we've been together ever since that is so cool yeah for that we're actually celebrating our 10th year wedding anniversary at the end of the month. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. It's fun. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's really crazy. I've never, I, I mean, you, you hear about that a lot. Like people just kind of meeting and going off, but people actually meet, run off together and stay together for 10 years and create a beautiful family. And you guys, oh. you guys have done some pretty like decent traveling together, right? Especially with his work. Yeah, like we haven't, um, we didn't travel overseas or anything like that, but um, like we were really lucky where we like, we lived in Texas for a year, which we really loved. And then we went to Vegas for three. And then I found out we were moving back to Delaware and I actually cried because like we're from Pennsylvania and I was like, I'm not ready to move back home. Cause like I knew when like we come back home, like we're probably going to want to set roots. And yeah, that's exactly what we did. <laughs> but I'm so glad we did because we, it's like we're still away from home, but yet we we're close enough where like we can be involved in like our families and extended families and stuff. But we we love like we have like our own little home we made here, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, isn't it in, interesting how organic it happened? But it almost just seemed like it was meant to be in a way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he still jokes. He's like, remember when you cried and you found out we were moving back to, to Dover? And I was like, I did. I thought he was joking. Yeah, that is so funny. Now, which one of the places that you lived in was your favorite? Um, San Angelo, Texas. Well, I mean, technically Dover is my favorite just because, honestly, I'm not just saying that because I'm like being sour grapes because we live here. Yeah. But it actually is my favorite. Like, I love the beach. I love, like, we we have like now roots that we've like dug in here and like we have like a good solid community where I think like you have a transit mindset when you live other places um but um but I do I love like actually the location of where we live um but San Angelo Texas was so much fun it is like a tiny town in the middle of west Texas and I mean you drive like 10 miles one way and you're in the middle of the desert yep that's pretty cool. I've never been to Texas. That sounds awesome, though. Oh, it is so, it is, like, the per perfect taste of what, like, Western, West Texas is. Like, there's, like, like, pe like there would be an old man and a bar we'd go to, because this was pre-kids and, like, right out of college. Um, and all, when we'd go to the bar, there was an old man who had, like, six shooters on his hip. Oh, yeah. Yep. But it was yeah, really they don't fun. play around in Texas. Yeah, they're not. You're gonna. You're not gonna go there and take their guns away. That's for sure. No, 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 no. And it was just a really cool, fun time. Yeah, you know? from the biggest state to the smallest state. That's pretty. Yeah. Like, that's must have been a small culture shock. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we. Well, it was kind of like baby steps because then we went to Nevada, and I feel like in Las Vegas is like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a whole different ball game too. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> so yeah. yeah now were you also in the service yeah um I did the air guard for six years how was in Pennsylvania that? were you the only uh, people in your little your little what do you guys call it squadron group I don't no, know um um so when I was deployed um there was one other girl and she was a lieutenant um and so it actually was kind of cool because she was a lieutenant and I was a staff sergeant at the time and um, because she, she would like, she was basically like the exec to, um, the commander. Yeah. So when the commander would get invited to go do like these off base things, cause we were in guitar. So it was like very like quiet and, um, it was really interesting. And when she'd get invited because she was a female, she'd invite me because I had, she couldn't be alone with them. So I got to go do all this cool stuff with her like, yeah. and experience all this like interesting culture stuff. 
um, because she couldn't be alone. And I was like, so I scored. Yeah. yeah. That's really awesome. It was a lot of fun. It was like, I, it was a really, I had like a solid experience with the military. It was, I, had we not moved, I would have probably just stayed in. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. yeah. It was pretty I didn't even, I had no idea. It's so crazy because I, I mean, I think I've known you for a few years, but it's like, I still learn all these new things about you. And I only saw that the other day because of a picture that you put on Facebook. I was like, wait a minute. I didn't realize yeah. also in the service. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't realize. A couple people said that. I'm like, I don't know. I just, it's like, that's something you really like, you're like, oh, hey, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's, it was just, I guess, you know, that was the past because now you're a mom of two and you're running your own business. So tell us a little bit about that, your, your business. What is it called? Um, so it's Momentum Fitness. Um, so my whole premise of Momentum was uh, to get moms out of the house and bringing their children with them and exercising with their kids alongside um, them. Because I really, I, I love the whole um, premise of like, you know, children's why care and children's daycare. care. I mean, that's like awesome. I've utilized yeah. it. Um, but I really thought that there was something special too about like having a kid next to you and having your child see you work hard in exercise and almost like see your kid struggle or see yourself struggle, um, with fitness. Because mm -hmm. I think so often, like it teaches like your kids something about, you know, um, they're constantly being told what to do and they're constantly like, you know, learning to walk, learning to talk, and then all of a sudden learning all these social norms that they have to follow into. And when your kid's next to you and seeing you like struggle with the push ups, struggle with the squats, I think it kind of creates that bond with them, you know? Yeah. And sometimes like you don't think that they're noticing you exercising and doing working out until all of a sudden they're like in a living room by themselves doing burpees at two, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I really, what I, but my main goal was with Momentum Fitness is creating like a fitness community where moms could come together, exercise, and really connect with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and you know this with yoga, like there's not a better environment to connect with other people than when somebody is moving and working their butt off, right? Yeah. It like taps into something where it makes you more vulnerable and but more comfortable to be vulnerable and open up. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Chi, uh, what's other? Life force energy, uh, Shakti is actually one of the names. Um, it's that whatever, whatever you want to call that energy that you do tap into. And when you're with other people and you're breathing together and you're building that resilience, you are struggling, helping each other get through it. Yeah, there's, there's something really special about that. And then, you know, being able to have your kid there with you, you know, and the times that I was able to come and bring Nyla with me, you know, it was nice to be able to get out of the house and to not have to worry about, well, who am I going to get to watch Nyla while I go work out? And, yeah. you, know, you know, she was really, really young at the time, but, you know, the ability to have her be able to watch me. So, because kids absorb and learn everything. Yeah everything you know and it's like if they can learn how to use your phone or if they can learn how to play the xbox or whatever then they can definitely learn how to do some burpees yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> i and I, I started the whole idea like back when liam my firstborn he's seven now um he was eight months old and um steven had deployed and so i moved back to pennsylvania and i was certified trainer and i'm like i need to in Bloomsburg, it's not a military community. And I like, I wanted to meet other moms and I wanted to work out with other moms, but I also had Liam with me. And so I started a, it's called like a strong moms program. And it was at the local YMCA up there. And we put our kids in our strollers and it was during the winter and it was the coldest winter in Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. <laughs> it felt like, and we put them in the strollers and I'd run classes in the gymnasium. And then, um, and I loved it. It was so much fun. And when we moved here to um, Delaware, we like I waited and settled in like a couple of years. And then when I had Adeline, I was like, I'm ready to do this again because yeah. I'm not really quite ready for her to like me to like run a whole bunch of classes without her by my side. And I just wanted to like kind of almost like I knew she was my last. I wanted to 
preserve that and do with it longer. And so that's where we started yeah. Momentum. That's really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. We started outside at the um, a local playground. And, and that was here in, in Delaware? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we didn't have an indoor space. And so like twice a week, we would run classes um, at, in, at a local playground. And it was mostly like newborns and babies at the time. So it was a lot, it was pretty easy. And we would just keep the babies in the strollers and then we would run classes. And after that wrapped up, we found an awesome space at the Jiu Jitsu Academy we train at. And um, we've been able to rent from him for the last four years already. That's just so crazy when you think about it, right? Yeah, I'm like, whoa. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? I'm going into business year number what? And it's so successful. I mean, everybody just loves it. Everybody that goes there loves it. You're doing such an amazing job with the community and with the families. Thanks. It's, I, I really love like um, just working with people who want to train with, like who want to work hard and they want to try because it's, yeah. it's really, it's about the moms, you know, it's about like the women that are training because they feel better. And I think it ultimately translates into our community because like, we're the ones raising the kids and we want and like we we need our moms to be healthy and strong yeah, yeah. and it you know like you've been to groups where like the tone is like oh, kids or like oh my god i'm so exhausted or, oh my gosh my husband and stuff yeah. and in the back of my mind for things like are you exercising are you moving every day yeah and spirits are so much higher when people are doing that yeah and you don't realize what well, you do realize, you know, if you're aware of it, but sometimes you could not realize that that is why you're so short tempered or frustrated or not getting enough sleep or irritated or whatever it is. And yeah. it could be just the lack of movement. You know, that's what we say at the studio that movement is medicine. And I mean, I even go through it too, you know, um, Nyla is, I don't know what, four, a year and three months. What? What is she? 15. 15. So we, were, we always said before she was born, we were like, we'll never be that those parents that say that our daughter is this many months old. We'll always say that like she's a year and this many months, but it's just so much easier just to say months. We're like, no, 15 months is how many she is. Well, and, but is there not a big difference though between a 15 month old and 18 month old? I do yeah. Yeah, I think I sometimes difference. think there is, or like I I used to do that all the time. Like, well, she's fifteen yeah. months old. <laughs> like, yeah, you're like yeah, and be, because you, it would just in your mind when you don't, and that mentality of like having kids and not having kids, it's so different. Like, I remember when I didn't have kids, I definitely, luckily, I didn't spew my opinion a lot, but I definitely had an opinion about kids and how people should parent their kids and what people should be doing with their kids. And now that I have a child you know, I definitely feel a lot differently about that. And um, it's definitely, I mean, I knew it was going to be hard, but it's a lot harder than I ever thought it was going to be. And, you know, trying to run a business and raise a kid and still be like a good person and a good girlfriend or wife, sister, daughter, whatever, you know, it could be a lot to balance. It could definitely be a lot to balance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so how do you find that you find time to do that? Because like, where is your you time if your kids are always with you when you're, you know, working out or at your classes? You know, how do you manage to find that kind of time for yourself? Because for me, like my yoga time, even though I'm teaching other people, like that's, you know, I still find that kind of time for myself to sit down and have a practice to myself or whatever. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, um, we're really good at early bedtimes also. And so <laughs> we, one thing was, is that we've always learned that early bedtimes have been, because our kids are early risers like we are. And so um, like eight o'clock. So Steve and I have always made sure that we had that time to connect afterwards. Yeah. And um, so that's one thing. And another thing too is, is that we, Addie goes to preschool now, which is awesome. And so she's not always with me. Um, it's a lot easier for me to teach classes. Like for a while, like I taught her with her, like literally on my chest, but um, cause she is four now already. So she goes to preschool and all that stuff. Um, it is crazy. And so I have that time. Um, a, a big thing that I found and I started doing it when she was like maybe six months old is jujitsu. 
So I would like quick nurse her and then, cause our classes were like eight o'clock at night. So I would nurse her so that I didn't have boobs filled with milk. <laughs> While you're trying to wrestle. <laughs> oh, do you remember <laughs> that pain? Oh. Uh, yeah, I do. I so do. I would nurse her and I'd put her down to bed and I would go and train like once or twice a week at night. And it was the most like, not selfish in a bad way, but it was like, I was a pure student. Like I was not, there was nothing I was teaching. I literally would show up and I would just learn. And I love that. Like, I love being a student because so often, I mean, you're a teacher, like we teach so much. And I think like, you need to be a good student to be able to be a good teacher. And mm -hmm. I just, I loved it because it would just be my time to learn. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And the best teachers are the teachers who are continuously making themselves students. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So really I think jujitsu has definitely become that outlet for both Steven and I, and then, and then he does it. So it's become like a connection for him and I to go do. And we'll be like, we've gotten babysitters before and gone on like our date, like we talk, call it our date night. We're joking, but like it is like, we got a babysitter and we go train together and then we'll grab drinks afterwards. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it, if you guys are enjoying it and that's what you love to do, that is super cool that you can find that with each other, you know? Yeah. 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 And, but that's really, that's like my me time. Like that's like where I find like, and it's a good workout too. So it yeah. feels good. Yeah. Sometimes. That is really, um, and you can tell that you love doing it, you know, like I just see how excited you are about it. You know, when you're on the mat, when you get off of the mat, you just seem to really, really love it. And it's really inspiring because it, you know it is infectious to the people that are around you. Other people can see that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's definitely like there, are, um, it, it, we, we've been fortunate where we found like, that's like a good community for us. And like the people in it are really good. And so you, again, you're like, you're, you get to choose who you surround yourself with. Yeah. And you do. It's pretty nice. Like that's like the beautiful thing about like adulthood for the most part. Like we, you can, you can really, <laughs> troll who you're around sometimes <laughs> yeah sometimes we forget we have choices right yes like I'm 32 years old and I'm like still catching myself like wait a minute ha! I can make a different decision or this is my choice I don't have to do that yeah it can be a little challenging you know I don't know why we worry so much about you know making choices that don't serve us we've talked about this so often like and I think it comes down to I think you and I both are I, I really think we connect because we're really loyal people yes yeah. so all of a sudden you, we can become way. really loyal to the decisions we make and what it what business wise you know and yeah. you become so loyal to those that sometimes you're like wait is this serving me yeah yeah is this serving me is this not <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I had my, what my really good friend Catherine said to me one day, um, because, because then you start to do that. Well, is this serving me? Am I enjoying this? Why am I doing this? You always go back to your why, and then you have to go back to your plans. And my friend Catherine, she's like, but that's how you know that you're a good person because you're even contemplating the fact that it is or is not serving you. Like you're trying to justify why you're either continuing to do it or not doing it. Um, yeah. you know, she said that just, it just goes to show that you're a good person because you care so much that you don't just want to let it go or you don't want to over, you know, take it over or whatever the, you know, the situation may be. Yeah. 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 It's, and loyalty, it's definitely you, hard. Yeah. And you talk about loyalty a lot. That's something that I, I feel like that is a, definitely a personal value that you hold because you, you, it does come up a lot. And I think it's maybe be through the practices that you have you know, and the people that you surround yourself with, that's probably why loyalty is something that you value so highly. And I think it's something that we're missing in, in the world. Like, I think loyalty is just kind of something that, um, I know, like, I, like I can only talk specifically to my own experience. So like in, in the yoga world, loyalty can almost be misinterpreted. Like if you're only willing to be a part of one team, then somehow that isn't necessarily loyalty that's putting yourself in a box. Whereas like, you know, when I was growing up, you know, we had like a, a group of friends and like, yeah, you could be, 
you could obviously be friends with other people and you could branch outside of your group, but your group was who you were loyal to. Like there was this, like a certain um, agreement energetically that you guys had together and there were rules that you guys had, so to speak. And I think in the yoga world, so many people, especially instructors, are afraid to be loyal to one tribe, so to speak. And I know for myself, when I was like, a, I called myself a freelance instructor, I was afraid to be loyal to one specific team group business because I was like, well, if I can only teach one or two classes here, I want to be able to go over here and teach one or two classes and there and teach one or two classes. So I guess what I'm getting at is that sometimes it's hard in this industry to be loyal to one specific business or organization because you're looking out for yourself and you're trying to feed yourself. You know what I mean? So how do you find that you, you maintain this loyalty to the groups that you're with, so on and so forth without, you know, like having a stigma around it? Um, well, you know, that it, I feel like, like anything, there's no, it's not black and white with certain things. Um, like you said, like you can't offer instructors, like, I'm not in a position where I could offer um, my instructors to teach a full class that could, you know, earn that income, you know? Right. Um, and so I, I really like, I've learned to let them know to set the boundaries, like while they're teaching, you know, you, you don't advertise other where you're teaching in other places. Yeah. Um, that's, it, it's, it's tricky because it's in, it's fitness. And, and you know what I mean? It is fitness. And so you, it's kind of, I don't know. It's like a little bit of tricky part because I can, I recognize like multiple different other workout places in the area that I, th I think are great. They, right. they are simply great, but they don't offer what I offer. You know, right. they don't offer people being able to bring their children with them. And for the people that want to do that, this is the only place that they're going to get it. And it, they're going to get it good. And it's going to yes. be good quality, you know? Yeah. Um, but again, I, I can't tell, you know, one of my instructors be like, you know, but you can't go and teach it over here yeah. because I don't feel like I can offer them like more classes at this time, right. you know? Yeah. So it's tricky yeah. because I would love to be able to be like that. I would be able yeah. to be like, nope, you're with me. Um, but it's, it's different. Um, where like, yeah. and it feels icky because I've, well, yeah. I've done it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, and to be honest, like, it just, seems, it's, it's, it's a, like, it's just tricky, you know, where, um, when it comes to, um, like jujitsu where we train jujitsu, like, I don't want to go anywhere else. Right. Like, and I don't, I don't, I'm not a main instructor for like classes, but I wouldn't want to go anywhere else. Cause there's nowhere better. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and that is, there is like, and I'm just being like, plainly simple like with that yeah. where but I'm and I'm in but I think it's like it's a different structure like it's yeah. jujitsu is something way different than doing a squat like does that make sense no yeah absolutely it does and see and I guess that's like you know because there are definitely certain businesses in the area like you know especially the jujitsu academy where you go where like you know I appreciate the like, I really enjoy the owner there. Like, I love his personality. Um, I just love, I don't know. I just love when people are just like really authentic and they just stick by what they say and they, everything else just kind of falls by the wayside and they're just like, this is who I am. And I love that. I love that kind of like mentality and leadership. So there are certain businesses in the area that I follow and I like their business models. And I find that those businesses that I really appreciate they're not, they just have this like natural following. Like people just, like you said, like, you're just like, this is just how it is. Like, I just, I wouldn't go anywhere else because I really, I just love this place. And it's like, how do you create that? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, cause there's no textbook for that. You know what I mean? It's just, you just are who you are authentically and people like that and they follow that. Mm -hmm. And you just create this loyalty by being just who you are. Yeah. And I mean, I just, I just admire that so much. And I just wish that, and I, it's something that I definitely strive for, but I just wish that it's like, I wish it just came naturally. Like I wish people would just like flock. It, it's so crazy. Like I, yeah, I, 
is this like where we're like in like the industry we're just like we're still babies and learning like our knowledge of like how to teach is awesome but then this is how we like are learning to grow as like leaders yeah yeah that's a really yeah definitely a really really good point and it takes balls to be like yeah it does can't train anywhere else like like yeah. you cannot work out anywhere else i mean that takes balls to be like that yeah it doesn't and when you can you can but you're not gonna then work out with less like it's cool yeah. like and but it is little but i again like i feel like like momentum fitness doesn't have like this heritage and lineage of like history and philosophy right, 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 right. i feel like they're apples and oranges does that make sense yeah no it makes perfect sense absolutely like, yes but it's yeah, like, momentum fitness is like you does this fit into your life right now because you're yeah. a mom and you want to train with kids come with me you know what i mean like yeah. perfect well, and, and that's kind of it. It's like, what do you want for your business as well? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you're not trying to create this, like, you know, this crazy comedy of like a business, but you, like, you're just trying to allow people to, you know, like moms, you know, fit this into your schedule, do what you can do sort of a yeah. thing. But, but people yeah. are loyal to that. You know what I mean? And oh, it's, it's I'm, incredible. Oh, and like, it makes, it, it's so freaking awesome because, you know, we have very few people that ever leave momentum because it's like, they don't like it. Like yeah. I, I really can count on one hand, which feels pretty damn good in four years that people can just be like, not for me. Yeah. Be and it's proved it because, you know, this whole COVID thing has been like devastating for so many people within that. And like within our confines, that's like all this has happened, like really awesome things have happened. And like, with yeah. us, like, being forced to do virtual stuff, that is, like, the last thing that I, like, ever, I am a one-on-one -on -one person, like, I love being, I love human yeah. connection, and I even was hesitant, I think I was, like, one of the last ones on board, like, after you were doing it, I'm like, well, we're settling in here for a couple months, so might as well go for it, and it was great, because I'm literally having members who, like, have gone back to work full-time, and, you know, have moved away, they're part of this virtual group yeah. and it's so great. So it's like, we're able to like reach more people in that regards. Yeah. Um, and, but it just showed like loyalty. I was like, damn, like mm -hmm. this is, this is badass. Like I like, this was good stuff because I stuck true to like how I want to teach and I, I didn't shift anything for other people to try to fit into what they think it should be. And it worked and yeah. people like stayed true to that and they knew exactly what they were getting when they signed up for it. Exactly. Yeah. That's a really good point that it, it did. It does allow that opportunity for people who weren't able to come to your physical classes to be able to, you know, yeah. still practice with you from States away, miles away, whatever. Yeah. That's really, really awesome. Now, do you plan on, I mean, Lord knows when we're even going to be going back into our physical spaces, but when you return, do you plan on continuing doing anything virtual? You know, so that's what, that's the big question right now, what I've been like trying to figure out. Um, <laughs> I feel like I love, I know, yeah, because I mean, our Zooms right now are at 9 a.m. So the people who would be able to do this, like the Zooms would, we'd be teaching classes at that time. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, but we've been, what we've been doing is we've been pumping out, um, like video. So we post the video of like what our workouts are for those who can't make it to that zoom. So at nice. least they have the workout. And I think it's, people really like that option because then they're not forced to have to get there at 9am. Yeah. Um, I I've always said this, I think working at home is way easier, especially when you got kids. I get it. Like, but I tell you what, eight out of 10 people. They don't succeed. They fall off the wagon. And I'm being yeah. serious. Yeah. They completely, they jump on the wagon. They love it. They love it. Guess what? We need freaking human connection. And I yeah. think that sometimes that online virtual, well, no, I don't think, I know. For the most part, I think online virtual workouts isolate moms and do them an injustice. Yeah, I would agree. What's your reasoning for that? I agree wholeheartedly, but why would you say that? Um, Because I think, you know, like you and I are talking right now and it's, it's really, it's good. It's a good connection. But if we but were together, it, it would be different for sure. What? Yeah. We we're, so different. Different. we're not, because I mean, there are so many feelings that go through a new mom and like, you, you know, 
it, it's not easier, but you need to brush your teeth. You need to get dressed. You need to get out of the house. You need that fresh air and you need that human connection. Yeah. Okay. Cause again, it's only one facet. I don't see the mess behind you. Oh, I don't yeah. see, I don't see like, that's why we're like, facing the corner of the room. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. So like if I were working out here with you and you'd be like, whoa, Allie's wall is like really white. It like, she's, like everything looks so good. No, so perfect. <laughs> It's not, I'm like literally sit, sitting in like a hoarded toy room right now, but you're not seeing that. You're only seeing one facet of my life. Right. Imagine when you're working out with somebody, they're only seeing like one facet of your life. I would like you say that all the yeah. time. Cause you see it, you know, I follow a lot of, I'm a guilty. I follow a lot of like yoga people on Instagram and you see their perfectly put together rooms that they're in or the little corner of the room that they're put in with their fancy little plant and these beautiful lights and tapestries. And I always wonder, I'm like, I wondered if we just zoomed this camera to the left a little bit because I'm guilty of it too. I have a nice little spot back there where I do my yoga recordings, but my desk is a hot mess. It's, it's a hot mess. We do that. Yeah. So yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah, that's and and so, point. so there's a whole nother level of when you have a mom strolling in to our, to the like academy space and she's got like, she was up three times that night with the baby on her boob. She has the toddler who's like all this energy wants to run around and she's just like, what do I do? You know? And she, but you know, she knows that she wants to work out. She knows that that movement's good for her. And not only is she going to get that movement, but she's getting somebody next to her being like, looking her in the eyes, like not through a freaking screen and being like, it's okay. Like we've been there. And all of a sudden, like people start talking and like explaining and like, mm -hmm. just kind of like learning about each other and like what their stories are. It's something that doesn't happen over zoom. And ideally like, you know, if somebody were to work out at home and then they're like, well, I worked out, I'm going to get a shower, I'm going to get dressed. And now we're going to go out. That doesn't always happen. What happens is it becomes like, you just become more introverted and yeah. Sometimes I think people need to get out and they need to, you know, experience community with other people and not just be isolated and, you know, more conversations happen. And I think what happens is, is with our group, we're not a breastfeeding group. We're not a uh, all natural birthing group, a baby wearing group. We're not, we're freaking moms. And we've got moms that have brought babies into the world, like all different kinds of ways. Yeah. And, and that's, what's awesome. We've got like, bottle feeding babies it, it doesn't matter but what it is is it's really cool because there's somebody for everybody and it's like it opens people's eyes and it's not isolating yeah it's pretty cool like I, we've had moms who like have like struggled with breastfeeding and they were like so frustrated and they're coming and like talking to us and like they're just we're not qualified to tell them what to do but we're moms and right. there's moms that are like we were going through that too and guess what don't feel like an asshole if you have to give your baby a bottle but had they gone to just one kind of group, you know, like yeah. one specific group, they might have been like feeling really stressed out and pressured to keep doing breastfeeding and felt guilty about it, you know? And so I think that like, we're, yes, a workout group, but we offer just kind of like an open space for all different kinds of women. Which is really important because it can be, um, as a mom, really overwhelming to know what decision is the right decision to make. And if and when you have anybody coaching you into one decision or the other, you know, you could hang on to that and attach to it and think it's the way. So it is important to offer that space for other moms. Yeah. And like you said, human connection and the fresh air, it is all very much a part of it. And you guys, so you guys seem to be doing a lot of getting out recently, especially since since the lockdown, so to speak. Yeah. So how are you guys handling that? Are you, so you guys are, tell, tell, tell us, talk to us a little bit about how you guys are handling your COVID-19 lockdown. COVID-19 life? Um, yeah, hashtag COVID. Okay, so I, I'm at, like our life together, like I'm genuinely like loving it because we are, we're on the go a lot. And so yeah. this, slow down has been like at first it was a little bit of an adjustment um but we're like on nice days like we're like exploring all the different beaches that we can get onto. um 
we're, we're like campers and we like to hike and stuff. And so just yeah. we've learned like getting our kids outside is for the best, like for everybody. Like we've like yeah. created little monsters in the way of like Steven and I love to move. We need to get exercise. Our children are the same way. <laughs> yeah. And they're four and seven. Um, so we've just been going out like to the beaches and hiking, um, lots of bike riding. I, for me, continuing to run the virtual programs has been really good because I love structure. Mm -hmm. um, and so I love like time oriented things. So I'm like, great. Well, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I have this. So then I mean, I have to produce this product by this time. So like, that's a really healthy thing for me to do. Cause otherwise I'll just kind of like, kind of yeah. like just like the dead bird flapping into the wind like I don't know like I just need that structure um and then um uh Liam he is in first grade so he's been like we've had we were we've been really conscious for him because you know it's hard like he is a boy in full and he wants to play with other kids and mm -hmm. he's been doing really well this four-year-old sister but like the kid mm -hmm. needs to be with like other boys and wrestle them and Mm -hmm. with nerf guns and we're i mean i'll be honest like we're like kind of getting to the point where we're like it's our, our kids mental health is more is also super important you know and yeah and uh, so you know we're we like i want him to be able to play with other kids and yes, absolutely you know and get out there and get into the fresh air so we're actually going camping this weekend Ooh. um that sounds so exciting I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm inspired a little bit. I'm like, I, I'm starting to get, I'm starting to feel it a little bit. I feel like I've been very, um, well, you know, cause there was a couple of times that you reached out and I was like, nope, not going anywhere. I'm staying here. I'm not doing anything. You've been good. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, I just, I don't know. I felt, I don't want to say I was instilled with some fear, but I feel like at the beginning, I just felt like this, like weird I don't want to say weird. I just felt this like sense of obligation that I had to stay completely locked in inside, not allowed to do anything. And I just wanted to follow the rules. And, um, but now, now I'm at the point where I feel, I, I feel like I have been following the rules and, uh, I feel like the kid in, in like the, in the principal's office, who was with like a group of other kids, but I was the only one that got in trouble. And like now I'm in the principal's office, but everybody else is outside playing. That's how I feel. So I'm just like, okay, I'm ready to go outside and play too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm starting to get like really anxious and it's getting to the point where like, um, I've been channeling my anxiety into like arts and crafts and I've been, which I, which is really cool. I made a lot of jewelry and I've made some dream catchers and stuff. Um, but I'm getting to the point now where like my anxiety is starting to come out in other ways and my arts and crafts just aren't doing it for me. So when you're saying like, you know, my kid's mental health is really important, you know, I feel the same way. I'm like, everybody's mental health is really important and I can feel, I can feel the weight of it kind of coming down. So I've been trying to venture out a little bit more. We went to Killen's Pond the other day and did the entire the entire loops, so I felt a lot better about that. So yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm with you, sister. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get up out of here. <laughs> yeah, like we're not having our kids go around like licking playground equipment, but we, <laughs> but like we've definitely been, uh, yeah, we we've, we've had them outside. Like it's, I mean, there's. What do you do? Well, I mean, we're not having them, again, like, they're not on playground equipment or anything like that, but yeah, like, going out hikes, going on the beaches, like, we're not, we're not, like, Rehoboth Beach, we're, you know, right. the cute local beach, it's good for you, right? Like, you felt yeah. so much better, and did you feel like you were in danger, like, walking no. by anybody? Not even the littlest bit. Yeah. No. Yeah. And people are being very, um... No, and I will say this, like, I don't, you know, it is what it is. And I think everybody, everybody's entitled to their opinion, but I will say like, I have been to a lot of different types of public places. So like, I've been to the grocery store a few times. I have been to the, the, the Mart store that starts with a wall and I've been to, um, Lowe's and I've been to parks. And when you go to parks, people are very respectful of your space everybody is following the rules. Um, you know, I didn't feel in danger or like anybody was in my bubble at all. But when I would go to these other places, 
these essential places, um, I definitely felt like people were not respectful of my space. Um, so what, so I just have to avoid even going there. So Webb is still working. So he, you know, he makes the store runs and stuff if we need it. Um, nice. but no, I didn't, I felt it was, it was the first time in a, in a few weeks that I actually felt like a little bit refreshed. And, you know, so, and we're, we actually said, we were like, yeah, we should do this at least like, you know, try to do it at least once a week, try to get out yeah. there and, you know, go walking around and stuff. And so I guess that's what we're going to do. I mean, I didn't think we were allowed to, which is kind of another reason why we like stayed in, but then I was like, well, I mean, it doesn't seem like we're not allowed to. So. Oh yeah. That's, I mean, at the state parks, like we, it literally, there's a sign that says like, um, like you can walk on the like at Cape and Lopen, um, we walked on to like where you would drive on to the beach to surfish. And the yeah. sign just says, um, uh, you can um exercise and walk your dog. Well, there you go. I'm like, okay. But then you can't surfish. Like we couldn't go surfishing on Steven's birthday because you're not allowed to have more than four people surfishing together, including your kids. So my brother has a surf fishing tag and he was telling me, he just came over on Mother's Day and he said that, I guess it was two people per tag. So like her, yeah. like him and his wife could go, but their kids couldn't come with them. Yeah. yeah. Where, they, where they, 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 they kicked a family off because of that. Like what? I don't, like where are the kids supposed to go? To the daycare that's open? Yeah, I, I guess you just don't go. Like, I guess you don't go, but I mean, I don't know what, um, yeah. So if you're just like a single couple, you could go, but if you had kids, you couldn't. No, no. So we were supposed to go on his birthday, and we just didn't go, obviously, because um, we had both the kids, and they were they're taking it serious. And then they, it, it's not just a fine; it's like a, um, it's like a an offense that stays on your record. I just don't even. I know. I know. I've been trying to be so good. Like I just yeah, and like respectful of it, and like because I do realize it's a scary reality for a lot of families who like have you know <laughs> weakened immune systems, and I get that. Um, but you know, I talk to some other families, and they're like, "This is no different than a f another flu season for us. Like this is how we treat every, you know, winter." Of flu yeah. season. But yeah. um, it's, it's definitely a strain. I mean, it's just it's just strange. I mean, it, I think if anything, it hopefully people are just thinking more than you know maybe just becoming a little bit more aware maybe I, I I don't know it's just such a strange situation so Dude. and I think it's like I don't know I think the I don't know it's like hard to even say it's like the powers that be it's like it's working because you know people people are choosing one side or the other that's it it's either black or it's white yeah. Oh, and they're mean yeah. and like judgy yeah. and yeah. it is like And I it's, always like I always love to give people the opportunity to be mean and judgmental. Like not that not like not to play devil's advocate, but I always like to just like put stuff out into the world and allow people to respond accordingly, like however they want. And I and it's always interesting because I'll just put you know, whether it's on Facebook or in a conversation or whatever, you know, I'll bring up a point and I won't agree with it or disagree with it. I'll just simply present it. And then some side or the other is just like, and, and, yeah. and, and it's so funny because you're like, but I'm not even picking a side. I'm just presenting the argument. And they're like, but you're wrong. And you're like, but you can't be wrong when you're not picking a side. And they're like, but you are wrong. And it's like, but I'm not picking a side. I'm just, this is just what the information is. And it's, I get so um, perplexed by people that are just so willing to just, and not even think with both sides of their brain. Those are the people that really intrigue me. Yeah. And, but then I've learned like in this whole thing, like um, you can't, like it there's no like reasoning with those kind of people and those are the loud those are the loud trolls that you hear and see and it, I don't know it's really I, I've learned like like I don't want to it's not that I'm being lazy but I, I don't want to put my energy into debating with these humans yeah who, like can't because they because they're not they have no interest in learning about what your opinion is they right. just want to scream at the top of their lungs what their opinion is right and they don't want to learn any other way and they just want to stick with it and it's terrible 
It is terrible. And they're so annoying that it, 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 it shuts people up. They, you're just like, I don't even want to hear this freaking, I don't even want to hear this anymore. Like I gotta, I'm just going to be quiet now because if that's what I have to deal with, then I would just yeah. rather. Yeah. And yeah. And I don't think it's you being lazy. I think you're being, I think you're smart by conserving your energy and mm -hmm. putting it into what's, you know, what's worthwhile rather than wasting your time on, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, I sometimes think because I don't like when it comes to things like that, like I'm always able to really understand like I can try to see like from like both points of view you know like I see so much gray area and sometimes I'm like should I have like stronger convictions I honestly think that I'm like ah am I too wishy-washy like do I see but but because like some people who have like those strong convictions I'm like wow like you really you stick to those guns you know yeah. No, I mean, I think, yes, I do know, I, th I and I understand what you're saying, but I always think about those people, what happens if and when the actual truth comes out? Then you have to stand by those convictions or whatever, you know what I mean? And even, and most times, even if it's presented that you were incorrect, you still have to stand by that because that's what you, you argued. And I think from an outsider's point of view, like with you, like, I don't think you're wishy-washy at all. I think that your actions speak louder than your words. Yeah. And I think that you just live your life based on what you believe. And I don't think you have to say anything because just the way that you live your life is just, it's pretty, you know what I mean? It's like, you don't yeah. have to argue about anything because you're just living your authentic life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. It's, so. it, it's tricky. It's really tricky. I don't know. I, I think like this whole thing has brought out like, I mean, I think they say that every time a big event like this happens, not like this because this has never happened, but a big event happens and, I just always want to like collect the most information I can so I can make a, a good understanding of what's going on. And there's no, like, there, you don't know what the truth is. Right. Right. You yeah, know? I don't know what the truth And we, I mean, will we ever really, like, will we ever really is what I always think. It's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think just keep living your life the best that you can. Did I you know, get, like, um. Did you get flagged by Facebook? Did you see that? The fact checkers? Oh, girl, you know how many messages I've gotten from Facebook about, oh, yeah, yeah, girl, I could show you my notifications right now. They're just like, and again, it's interesting to me because it's, I'm just sharing or whatever, and I'm not picking a side or another. I'm just simply presenting information, and yeah, I've gotten a few about um, Facebook fact checkers have flagged my flagged my post for, you know, false information. And then you click on where your link originally was and they've replaced it with saying, um, like basically like false accusations. Yeah. But you know, it's like crazy. And again, this is all whatever, but like, you know, you can go on the internet and you can watch people being decapitated. You can go on the internet and you can watch people having sex. You can go on the internet and you can watch whatever you want to watch. You can look up whatever you want to look up. You know, you can, you can buy and sell kids. Like, you know what I mean? Like just crazy stuff, but you better not, you better not post anything that whatever what's his name mark zuckerberg or whatever whatever you know whoever his little partners are you know it's just it's just um it's just very interesting what you what you have access to what you're allowed to do what you're not allowed to do and i'm not going to talk about human rights or anything like that because i think that's like a little maybe a step too far but it's just very perplexing to me the certain things that are allowed and not allowed on the internet <laughs> Well, it, it, well, I mean, it comes, I think it comes down to, you know, the media literally is like controlling the narrative, you know? And, and I think I, I would, if anything, I'd want people to like realize like, you know, our Facebook account, like it's not ours. Like right. it doesn't, there is, it's a business and it's a company who is dug deep into other areas. And right. it's so like, that's not where freedom of speech should be shared. Like, you know, as much True. as we want to, like, we want to do it there like really like I think that proved to me at least to me I think at that moment it proved to me like no like they literally changed what I wanted to share exactly so 
so those those weren't my words so that's not what so it's it's kind of crazy like in that regards yeah it is it's absolutely insane and it's you know I don't I don't even know it's like it's like I have so much that I want to say but I'm almost like afraid because like I want to post this on the internet so I also don't want this to get taken down so I'm like <laughs> I almost just am like, maybe I shouldn't say anything, but I think that for me is really disheartening. And like, I don't know, I just feel myself getting emotional just thinking about it. Like the fact that like, I can't say what I want to say. And like, you can call it white privilege. You can call it uh, a first world problem. You can call it whatever you want to call it, but it really makes my stomach hurt that I don't have a freedom of speech. Period. No, but that's the thing is that is a real fucking first world problem because we live in a first world problem. We live in a fucking first world. Okay. Right. Like we like should have the rights to be able to say we are not hurting anybody. Like we right. are not, we're not like slandering anybody really. I mean, but like you have the right to be able to say what you want to say. Yeah. And, and we can't, but, but, but it can't be on, <laughs> like, it's almost like you gotta go old school and go stand on a box down in town hall. <laughs> yeah, it. but you better wear your mask and you better have gloves on, because if not, they're gonna kick you the fuck out of there, too. And everybody better be six feet apart from you. Yes, exactly. So that, these are some serious problems, because we yeah. have these rights, and they're, like, slowly, and I don't want to sound big box, but, like, or tin hat, but, like, they are, they're, like, being taken away the scariest thing i heard was that people are trying to push to do mail-in um mail-in voting like that's just insane like, what, what year are we in well i mean how you like you're gonna trust you, how could you ever trust that right yeah and then people are like oh i'm too scared um to be able to i'm too scared like it's too dangerous to go there Stephen told me, and this is, I'm going to probably butcher this because I am the worst at like, like world affairs, but he was there when, I, I think he was there when it was like in Afghanistan or something like that was when like everything shifted or is it Syria? Oh my gosh, I'm butchering this. But anyway, somewhere overseas where they like shifted to like a democratic state and people risked their lives to be able to, the first time to be able to vote. Like they literally walked and where they thought like they could literally be shot for this and they voted for the first time because they had that right. Yeah. And he's like, I'll never take that for granted over here. And I think people fucking do like, we they're don't. like, what's the big deal? And I'm like, they're like, you, it's too dangerous. I'm like, you're scared of like, you'll go to Lowe's, but you're too scared now to go because it's too dangerous to vote. I'm like, somebody is, could be risking getting shot overseas where like they were gonna, they were willing to risk their life for this amazing right for the sake of their kid's future. But your people are saying they're too scared to go vote. Like, yeah, it's bullshit. It is bullshit. And they, and I butchered you know, that. I hope Steve doesn't go back and watch this. He's going to be like, you butchered that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Allie, just stop talking to people about stuff. <laughs> no, I, no, you, I, but you got there. the gist, right? You no, got you definitely gist. got your point across. No, you definitely got your point across. And I know, you know, and I think we do take a lot of things here for granted because it's just, it's, it's always been accessible to us. It's always been something that we have had. And, you know, you can't imagine going somewhere and being told like, no, you can't vote or no, you can't do this. Um, and I think that for me is what's a little bit scary because, you know, forget me, like, what about my daughter? Like, if you guys are telling me right now, I don't, I can't speak certain things that you don't agree with. What are you going to be telling my daughter in 17 years when she's old enough to vote or understand or ask, you know, wrap her mind around what's happening? Like, mm -hmm. I, I think, I don't know. I wonder sometimes if people are thinking about that, like if they're the people who are letting this fear take over their life, like, what do you, what happens when this is go, you know, like what example are you setting for your child? Like, I don't want Nyla to think that it's okay to just roll over and do what you're told. I, I don't know. It's just, it's such a hard situation because I understand that people are sick and I understand that, you know, this is a, a virus that we can't physically fight. We just have to like, let it run its course. But at what point do we intercept and say like, but this doesn't make sense. Like, this isn't right. We, you know what I mean? I want to set Absolutely. that example for Nyla, and I don't know. I well, was the other day, somebody I, was like, because I said, I was like, well, I have a date in my mind that I would like to open my business. And I, and at this point, 
I'm pretty set on that's the date that I'm going to open. And I had said, you know, like if they want, if they want to close me down, they're going to have to physically come in there and take me out. And said person was like, you know, yeah, you might think you have human rights, but like they will come in there and shut you down. She was like, you're better off just like waiting it out. And, and like, I don't know, I just didn't like, yeah, she has her right to say that. But at the same time, like she also doesn't own a business or run one. Um, and I don't know that I don't feel that way. If you want to just like lay back and let people, you know, run all over you, then, then you do that. But that's just not where I'm at. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be the problem child, but I also like, I feel like at a certain point, like you have to hold your ground. Right. I, yeah. And then and the thing is, is that like, like their COVID like, again, is scary for some people. Yeah. Like it, it's scary and it is an unknown. And there are people that like do need to stay inside in a way. But like, I feel like then like the people that are healthy, like there needs to be a world for people to come back out to. Yeah. And there needs to be our rights to come back out to. So mm -hmm. isn't it, you know, doesn't that come back down to like human nature where the, the healthy and the strong should protect that? and yeah. should go out and like exercise their rights and make sure that they don't get taken away. Yeah. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think like, wh where did we all, where did we all stop and say like, why does it have to be like, well, I'm sick. So I stand and so do all of you. Well, guess what? Then there's not going to be a fucking world for you to come out to. Uh -huh. So, but how about you stay in, you stay in because you're sick and you right. could get sick. And I respect that. And that's terrifying. Or even if your child gets sick, that is terrifying. So yeah. you stay in, but you know, there, there needs to be something to, there's so many big ramifications that are coming out from this because it's not just like one thing. Like, it's not just like, it's not just all about science. It's also about human rights. Yeah. And, and, and I have the luxury to be concerned about the human rights side of things because I am healthy and, and could I get sick? Yes. Could I get hit by, by a fucking car? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I just yes, think I about, I just, it's it, like in, in, I have that luxury right now and it's, yeah. it, you know, and like, I'm sure that there will be a million different arguments against this. Well, yeah. And I get yeah. it. I, mean, I have a really close friend who is an in-home nurse and she thinks the same way that people who are susceptible to the illness should definitely be staying home, but people who are healthy should be out living, you know, and she, she's a nurse and she's working with COVID patients and she says, she says the same thing and it doesn't, you know, and it just, for me, it's like, who's making up these rules? Who's like, you're allowed out, but you're not allowed out. You can stay open, but you can stay open, you know, like. Who's making up these rules? The government, big businesses, whoa, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, the, it, it, it's like, it's almost like they don't want small businesses around. They just want big business. And yeah. I, I like, do you think it was it is safer for me to go surf fishing with my family? Or do you think it was safer for me to go to Lowe's and every flooring store, because we bought floors and I touched every single piece of flooring because I was looking for floors with my hands. Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It of does. course I washed my hands afterwards, but like, yeah. it's definitely more dangerous for me to go to Lowe's than it is to go surf fishing with my family of four. It definitely is. It definitely is. But, but and, you know, like, and I think the sad thing is too, is that we're, we like, I know for me, like, I know I can go to Walmart. I know I can go to Lowe's. I know I can go to Food Lion. So those are the places that I frequent. You know, I'm like, let me just run over here and grab something really quickly because I know that I'm allowed to go there. You know what I mean? And like, yes. it's yeah. absolutely absurd. And like you said, it does feel like, I don't want to, it does feel like it is a drive to get small businesses out. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. And all the large businesses are still open. Small businesses are not allowed to be open. Um, you know, I know for me personally, I still have to pay my rent in full. I did, we got no break. We got no nothing. Um, so I mean, that's also stressful, you know, like, and that's been my, that's been my biggest argument for this entire thing is like, I do not understand how you can mandate a business to close and then not mandate these leasing companies to stop taking payments for rent. It's absolutely absurd. It's absurd. 
Absolutely. And it's like, where's your relief then? Well, okay, the government, then you want, you want to close me down, then where's my relief? If you want us to depend on you, because yeah. they're, it's not accessible for small businesses. Yeah. And I mean, and you know, they have like the PPP loan, um, which I did apply for and like went through all of the steps just to see like what the, you know, just to get the information on what it would be. And it did say that it could be forgiven if I were to use it to pay for like my rent or to pay employees to keep them on. But then like in the fine print, it says that, you know, of course that has to be approved. So then you would have to send in all this information and it would have to be approved. Once it was approved, they would send it to you. And if it wasn't approved, it was like a 1% interest rate plus 5% on top of the entire loan if you were late. Like all these little stipulations. And I can't help but think, and again, it could be forgiven. I could, this could just be me overthinking it. But, you know, I think back to the housing market. Um, I want to say like mid 90s or something when they or maybe it was early 90s maybe late 80s when they they sold all those mortgages to people that they knew could not afford to pay those mortgages and then you had like in the early 2000s a bunch of homes in foreclosure because they gave loans to people that they knew could not afford to pay these loans back and i hate to say it but i that's almost what this feels like you're like yeah you're only approving these small businesses for x amount of money to cover this this and this but let's say you give them the loan, but then we're not allowed to go back to work. And this is just like, I'm always thinking worst case scenario, right? Of course, so you have to. In, in the fine print, the, the loan said that the payments would begin in, I think it was like November, my payment specifically would have began in November 13th or something. Let's just say that this whole, supposed to be going back June 1st, which is now June 10th, gets extended to July and then to August, and then September, and then October. And then let's say we're not allowed to open again until December. Well, guess what? Now you've taken out a loan that you've agreed to pay back by November, start paying back in November, but your business isn't allowed to reopen until December. So now you're not only are you out all that money that you couldn't afford to pay, but now you're out the money on the loan that you have to start paying back in November, even though your business can't open in December. And I understand that people are believing that we're going to be open by mid-June, July, August, but let's just say we're not allowed to reopen until January and you've agreed to start paying a loan in November. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't. So my question to my bank was, could I sign for this loan, but the payments not start until a year from now? Or what if we, can I sign for this loan, but the payments don't start until my business reopens? And they said, whatever is on the loan agreement is, is when you will start paying back. But yeah, by then I could prove that I paid, I at least used it to pay rent, but let's just say that you, you didn't. Let's just say that for some reason you had to continue paying that, you had to start paying back that loan and here your business is still closed and you don't, yes. you're still struggling to pay rent. So, I mean, it's a lot of different factors to think about and small business owners should not have to, should, we should not have to be thinking about this right now. No. Period. Like we, no. should, we should not. And then of course I think about the ripple effect, you know, clients are paying for services. Are they really getting, are they really getting, you know, what they would be getting if you guys were in a physical space together? And mm -hmm. that's, that's always been my argument. You know, like I have some really loyal clients and they're absolutely amazing. It's such a great tribe of people. But at times I wonder like, how long are they going to hold on to their loyalty before they're like, yeah, Love ya, but this, you know, this ain't working for me. Yeah. Well, it's a trickle down effect. Like and, and people then also, their financial state is different than when it was before, you know, six months ago when they signed with you, like it's, it's really hard. Or it's like, you know, say if we open mid June, July, they're acting like, like we can't pretend that, um, every single member is coming right back into our doors right away. Oh yeah. They're not. Yeah. They're definitely, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and so that's like another thing that like, where like that, like, would I continue to do online classes through the summer, you know, because, you know, moms and young kids or babies like may, may not want to 
feel comfortable, you know, to get into a space. Yeah. Like that. So it's definitely a tricky situation. (laughs) Yeah. And then I think about it on the other side of it too. The people who are possibly really enjoying the virtual workouts on Zoom at home. And one of the things that I journaled about just the other day was the possibility that people might think that they don't need studio yoga or studio workouts or whatever. And they're like, oh, well, you know what? I can actually just do this on my own at home. And, you know, for whatever reason, they decide that they want to venture off and, you know, not come back to the studio. That's also been, you know, been a thought. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've gotten feedback like that, similar to that. And it's, I'm, I'm glad currently like that they feel that way. I think that's, it's great that like they're satisfied with what they're getting and it's, it's fantastic. Um, but again, I think like you need to be, and not any, only just for social aspect, but I, I, I think though, like the movements that you're asking people to do need to be corrected by your trainer. Like that's, it's just plain and simple. Like you're, yeah. you're not going to get the quality of, you know, yoga practice or, um, fitness. If somebody's not next to you, like checking your form and stuff, you're not yeah. going to grow if it, by any means. No. And there's just like, you know, and we could, we're kicking a dead horse, but there's just something about <laughs> being, being together and just, there's like an energy, you know, it, it, there's just an energy about being in the same space as another physical human being. And, you know, just being able to see them and even cue them with your words, even if you can't touch them, there's something really powerful about that. Like just noticing that they're out of alignment and telling them to, you know, put their self back in alignment. You know, you can't see that stuff on Zoom. No. As no. much as you try. And I mean, you know, I would find myself like I'm trying to physically practice so they can see me. I'm trying to watch the screen on gallery view so that I can see all of them and maybe help keep them in alignment while I'm talking and teaching at the same time, it's like a disaster. So I've learned that I just have to practice and teach and hope to God that their form is good. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely um, tricky that I've, I've really lucked out with um, Mel and I have been like formed a really good partnership. My other instructor with like these zooms, because we've been able to like work together and kind of like, now we have four eyes, you know what I mean? And yeah. looking at it, cause it's definitely something that you know we're con- I'm like like I'll, I'll like teach something and like so I'm doing it on my phone and so I have one gallery view of like four women so like each round I like skip to different um women so at least I'm able to see yeah um you know like I'm with those four women at that time for that round yeah I've actually been thinking about um just teaching from like sitting from my mat instead of actually practicing just teaching and watching Yeah. But I just feel like, I just, I I mean, maybe as I'm overthinking it, but it just feels like almost lazy to me that I would just be sitting and watching as people are practicing. But essentially in the classroom, that's what I do. I I teach and I observe. Uh So I'm just sure if maybe that's what I should do with Zoom, but I haven't tried it yet. It does. It feels weird. I think, I think, you know what, like I, this is what separates like these kind of things, like us not crumbling. This is what separates like the strong minded, the, the will, if you might say like, of, of like getting creative. Like I, I have so much respect for so many of like, you know, people in our community who are like, you know, they're like, all right, I want to still teach. Like I have the love and passion for this. So let's make it happen no matter what, you know? And like, let's make this work guys. And it's really been cool to see that from yeah, different businesses in the area. Yeah. And some, they're getting so creative too. Like people are getting super creative with what they're doing. Like it has been really inspiring. And some businesses are just like, they're just like doing so much in the community. It's just like, it's so cool to see. I'm like, good for you guys. Cause like, I don't know where they're finding the time or the energy for that. <laughs> it's, it's tough really cool it's to for sure. Well, I mean, you're running a whole business with, you know, a little one around you too. <laughs> Yeah, she definitely keeps me busy. And Webb's still working full time, so. Oh, dang. Yeah, he's putting, you know, he works for a tent company, an events company. So he's been putting up a lot of quarantine tents. And, um, they, like, every day they're putting up more and more tents for Amazon. Oh, you told me about that. Yeah. So um, so they're definitely staying busy just, just with Amazon. So, which is good, you know. Again, the trickle-down effect. It's good for us. 
you know, thank God he works for a company that works for a large business because they're in, they're able to keep their doors open, which in turn has been allowing us to keep our doors open. So, um, you know, it's just, it's so interesting. It's because that's the wheel, right? It's like, I'm really frustrated about large business and large corporations, you know, such as Amazon, but that wheel is literally feeding us. You know what I mean? Because web is working for them right now. So if it wasn't for them, he wouldn't have work. It's just such a strange. Um, it is so strange. And that's where our perspective becomes not black and white, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, it is. Yeah. I mean, the, it's crazy. Like, cause I can't imagine like families that are like just all in, in one business, you know, who, and they're struggling. Like mm, it's yeah. like the desperation. And then when you have kids and like trying to feed your own kids, like it's just so scary and sad. Like I can't imagine. Yeah, I know. I'm definitely ready for this too. I mean, I don't think I, nothing's obviously going to go back to regular, but I'm definitely ready for things to get back to some type of norm, you know, like I'm just ready to get back to the studio. Like I'm just, and I guess at this point I'm just getting frustrated too. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm ready to break out. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. You, you've been, you, yeah, you've been following those rules real good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm almost to the point where I feel like a, like I'm bitch made. You know what I mean? Like that's how I feel. Like I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I have been good. I, I'm at the point now where I'm about like, I don't, I don't want to be good anymore. I don't want to yeah. be good anymore. I'm ready. I think I've gotten comfortable though. Like I, I like routine and I feel like in our own little world, like I'm not comfortable with what's going on outside of this house, but I've gotten like very, like, I feel like I could do the same thing for every day as long as it's routine and structure for yeah. like months. Like I feel good, but again, we're out and about, we're doing stuff like, yeah. but I like, I like our pace of life right now. Like, yeah. Liam doesn't have lacrosse and wrestling and Addie doesn't have cheer and stuff like that. And I feel that that's a very selfish thing because they're all things that my children need to do, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, it, it's been a really nice like pace. Yeah. I will say that is one thing that I'm taking from this and I want to continue to take with me is that, you know, I do like the slowing down of it. Um, yeah. There's been two things, two major things that I've realized from this whole situation is that one, I, I just, I work extremely too much and not in the sense of like clocking in, clocking out working. I mean, just like, I just give, I just give too much. I, I give too much. I care way too much about things that I should not care about. <coughs> and I, I put my time and my energy into like people and places and things that just don't necessarily deserve it. So I definitely want to like take that with me when this is all over, like just slowing down and not just doing stuff just because I feel loyal to have to do it. Um, so there's definitely some things I'm going to be cutting out. You know, I just want to spend more time with my family and not so much time like worried about my business because, and that's something that this has also opened my eyes to is that, you know, there are certain things that I gave too much energy to that at this point, like it wouldn't even matter. And the things that really do matter are what are right in front of me right now. And a lot of the times, like, this is what I would be pushing off to go to work, so to speak. And that's not what I, I want to do. Like, I don't want to give more time to my clients than I give to my family. So that's one, that's been the major thing. And the second thing is like, Brianne Brown says that you should never go out into the world looking for evidence that you're not enough or that you don't belong or anything like that because you're always going to find it. So I think that's another thing too, is just like being okay with who I am and what I believe in and not being swayed or caring too much about what other people think about it because it just brings you down. And there's always going to be those people who no matter what you believe, don't believe in you and downgrade yeah. you for it. Yeah. So, and I think I've always thought that I feel like I've always believed that in myself, but I feel like I really want to start like, embodying that in a way and owning it yeah 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 and just being okay with it and just being okay with it i think is like the biggest this thing. is where that growth and that learning goes to be boss freaking leaders right yeah like just like accepting like getting comfortable with ourselves and confident with ourselves in that regards because yeah. we're so confident in so many other ways in our life but yes certain things like that like 
is that like a woman thing? Like, are we like trying to? <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yeah. I think that, you know, I believe in this natural uprising, you know, the Shakti rising of females and just feminine entrepreneurship. I think that, I think that is what's going to be a result of what's happening right now. And I think that this is the growing phase and we're pulling back these layers and it's really uncomfortable. It's not fun. Um, but I think it's necessary you know, in order to step into that leadership position, because I think ultimately that's what's coming. Like it, this is time for the people who are really in true leaders to step up and say like, all right, follow me. Because that's what it's going to take. Cause I feel like, you know, we're all being, um, we just need that. We need people to step up and say, follow me because they're like, we're following all the wrong people right now. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. 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 I agree. And that, yeah, I never realized like I was one who was uncomfortable with like making others uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? Or like pushing others, like, like I care too much of like how people would maybe perceive me or I wouldn't want to upset somebody else. Not necessarily perceive me, but I just wouldn't want to upset somebody else. And yeah. I never realized how much I didn't I like, I cared about that until like owning a business. And I'm like, Oh, I, that's like, I got to like push to be like, no, this is what I believe in and then move forward. So it's like with business and personal life. Yeah. And I think that you just hit it on the head. It's just like, this is what I believe in and just move forward. Like you don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to show your work. You just, this is, this is me. This is what I believe in. And I'm going to keep on going because I got other stuff that I need to do. Yeah. That empowerment. That's, that's what it takes, you know? So you have to like coach yourself, right? Yeah. Like you have to be like, okay, like it doesn't come easy. Like it seems no. like you like, because you don't want to, and, and what's hard is, is it's like assholes are easy to be like, screw off. Right. Like right. people that are just blatant assholes. I'm like, I don't care if you don't like me, but it's, yeah. the, it's, it's the people who like, you know, you're going to upset and you know, they're good people. Yeah. But like, this is what I believe in. So I'm going to go this way and it'll just be a different direction. Yeah. And, you know, and I think too, just like agreeing to disagree. And I think that's when you, you know, that's the hardest thing. Like I remember when I was in college, we used to do mock debates. Remember you would intentionally pick a side. You would intentionally talk to people that you did not agree with that chose the opposite side. And you would have like healthy mock debates. And it's like, where did we lose that? Where did we lose this ability to just agree to disagree and just be like, you know, you're on that side and I'm on this side, but here's why. That's how people grow. When you, when you don't agree on the same things, but you can come to a compromise. And I think somewhere along the lines of we've, we, we've, we've lost that ability to communicate in a, in a, with an experience that we don't necessarily agree with and just be okay with it. Yeah. And the answer is it's because people have become keyboard heroes. Oh. And it's, it's, it's that because I guarantee you people, if they were in person would never say the things that they say in person that they say on the internet. And I, yeah. it's just blatant. Like it's, it's the truth. And yeah. it is keyboard heroes. Yeah. I, I've never heard that before. Really? No. Yeah. They're keyboard heroes. And I, and I honestly, and that's like one thing where I try to practice. I'll never, I really try hard to never say anything on the internet that I wouldn't say to somebody in person. Like yeah. it genuinely would not because it's, it's, it's not right. And it's not a fair way to fight or argue or not, I'm not fight. I'm not fighting online with anybody. Yeah. But. No, 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 I know what you mean. Yeah. And it, we just get so freaking caught up though. It's like, we do, we end up fighting on the internet, which is like, you just look so stupid when you do that. I'm definitely guilty. I'm definitely guilty. I'm like, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Or you get angry and I'm like, how, I can't let somebody, like you get like, somebody said something really, really ugly and mean the other day. And it wasn't towards me, but it was about like the military and like military members. And it was just so dirty. And I'm just like, I got so angry. And, but no matter what I said to that person would not have changed his stance. And right. I just, you just move on. Right. And like, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, I think and unfollow. You can unfollow people. I unfollowed him. Yeah. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> yeah. It's like the best thing. Unfollow, unfriend, call it a day. Yeah. I love that. So do you guys have any plans for the day? What are you guys doing today? Um, I'm not quite sure. It's supposed, I don't know what the, it's pretty decent now because everybody was still sleeping when we started this call, believe it or not. I know. And, oh, 
okay. I actually thought it was later. It's not too late. Yeah, Nyla's nice. actually sleeping. Yeah. That's what I said. I was like, I told Steven, I was like, oh, I'm like, we're going to do it nice and early before Nyla wakes up. And he's like, her daughter sleeps that late? Like, what are we doing wrong? <laughs> like, oh, you know, look, you see, what did we do wrong? Yeah, she, and you know what's crazy? She goes down for bed between like 7.45, 8.15 every night. So like when you said that, I'm like, I'm with you, but we do the same thing. Um, she usually gets up once or twice at night. And we are like, we've gotten away from giving her the bottle at night and in the morning, like I'll go in, like when I first wake up or when he first wakes up and we change her, give her a bottle and then she'll sleep until like nine, nine thirty. Yeah. So okay. I mean, she I'm sleeps rock. for 12 hours and we always joke because Webb just, he loves to sleep. Like that man could fall asleep anywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. Like he'll just fall asleep. And it's, we, it's just always been the joke. Like, you know, Webb can fall asleep anywhere, but I always say now that the joke is on everybody else because Nyla sleeps just like her dad. And she, oh. the night, even when she was younger, like the doctor, I would be like, you know, she sleeps, like I'll put her down at midnight and she doesn't get up until like six. And the doctor's like, no, you have to wake her up every two hours and feed her. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. And I didn't yeah. do that. I didn't do that. I was a bad Good. I was like, I'm not doing that. And I would let her sleep and then I would wake her up at six and I would feed her. And I swear that's why she sleeps through the night now. So to all new mamas, I, I don't follow that whole two hour feed in thing. So if your baby is sleeping through the night, let your baby sleep through the night. Cause yeah, it's genius. Yeah, just say a prayer, send one up because that does not happen all the time. <laughs> no, I well, they, like mine were never the best sleepers. Like they go to bed early, but they were never like, they would wake up. They would just, and like, yeah. just soothe on me. And I'd be like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. When <laughs> I the teens, she gets up in the middle of the night and acts like a crazy person, but oh yeah, yeah but she's uh, she's got to have us all of her teeth in now. She's so big. Like what? I, she's basically a grown up. Oh, I'm grown up. <laughs> yeah. She's basically a grown up. I can't even take it. It's crazy. <laughs> at that point. Oh. Well, so tell cute. the people, thank you. I know. So I love that her and Addie are such good friends. I can't wait till they come. I know. It's so cute. I know, she like Addie like should, dress up with her. Soon. Yes. I love that they were yeah. they were wearing basically the same clothes at her birthday party. I was like, that's perfect. It's amazing. <laughs> she like loves her so much. Like it's so cute. Like I think I think Nyla serves it like, and then I think she thinks it's so great that she can because Addie's little too that she can carry Nyla. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, she's getting big now. We'll see. Well, Addie's so strong. I'm sure she'll be able to pick her up and just throw her over her shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> her 32 pounds. <laughs> <That's Yeah. laughs> Well, tell the people um, where they can find you if they want to follow your virtual classes or if they want to learn any yes. more about you. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. So you can find Momentum Fitness Delaware on Facebook. That's the best place to find us. Um, and you can follow our page and contact us on there and get you hooked up for our virtual classes. They're a lot of fun. And it's, it's like I said, like it's a good way. Like, you know, we're stuck at home. It's a good way to start a morning where you know, we bring it up and everybody's like, Hey, how are you? And it's just, it's good to see other faces and talk. Yeah. And you just, we just jump in. Our workouts are not cute. They're hard work. Yeah, they <laughs> really sweaty. Are. I think that's like the most, like, um, that's the most misconception about our workouts is that somehow like, because they're for moms and like we coined it for moms and with kid, having your kids around, it's cute. And they're not, they're tough and they're good. Yeah. It's a hard work. Yeah, and them squat jumps ain't no freaking joke. No, no, yeah, we train uh, like mothers. <laughs> yes, I was like, I can't jump anymore. My floor's gonna fall through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so find us on there, and I'd love to see like if anybody wants to come join us, and um, it's it's good stuff. I'm really I'm really thankful that I took that leap, and honestly, it was with like pretty much like the encouragement of you guys, like you and you and Jess, like inspired me to like you know, stay engaged and keep moving. So. Yes. I know. Just awesome. out there killing it too. Yeah. It's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. So it's it's cool. Stuff. Yeah. And I'll but put a link, um, you know, a link to your page down in the description, in the comments. So that way they can find you a little bit easier, but I appreciate you taking the time just to chit chat with me and talk to me a little bit about your life and what's going on and how you guys are handling COVID and um, yeah. just keep doing what you're doing. You're super inspiring and you're really, 
just shedding light into the entire community. So thank you for everything that you do. And for moms, we really, really appreciate you. And I can't wait until all this is over and we can get back together. And I can't wait to see you. It's good stuff. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Bye, guys. You're welcome. Bye. Have fun camping this weekend. Yes, I will. See ya. Bye.